So you're a popular actor with a career in full swing. You've been nominated for an Oscar. You've won a Golden Globe. Winner is Meg Tilly. <laughs> what would make you walk away from all of it? Well, ask that to Meg Tilly. That's what happened to her. From the outside, her life seemed pretty cool. But the truth was far from it. See, Meg was still just a kid from BC when she co-starred in The Big Chill. After that, she won the Golden Globe, playing a troubled nun in Agnes of God. And while filming the movie Valmont, Meg started dating a relatively unknown actor by the name of Colin Firth. I'm in love. Then why aren't you with her? I am with her. I'm talking to her right now. He, by the way, is the baby daddy of her youngest child. And while they are no longer together, they are still on good terms. Now, 1994 comes along, Meg quits acting. This time out allowed her to raise her kids, but it also gave her a chance to stop pretending and to start owning her own truth. And it's a hell of a truth. She began writing novels as a way of working through the abuse she suffered as a child at the hands of a stepfather. Now Meg's stepped back into the business with a nudge from her older sister, Jen, in the new miniseries called Bomb Girls. Hustle in, girls! Green shift can't finish until you take their place. She plays a strong woman who endures a lot of anguish. I need your help telling Edith her husband died. So, but my sons, they're alive? Yeah, of course, yeah. It's a fitting role for an actress who's changed dramatically off screen since she last starred on screen. Everybody, please welcome Meg Tilly. Hi, Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Welcome to the program. Thank you. What's happening? 18 years. I know. Is, is that how long it's been since you were? <laughs> yeah, 18 years. Between acting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's a, it's a really... You know, it's so hard to build a career that you had one really going, and then you, you walked away from it. Mm -hmm. What was it like the first time you walked back on set? It was fun, but it was different because things have changed a bit. But not so much. You either suck or you're okay. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and the fear is your friend's directing it. You don't want to suck. Right. Is that what got you interested in maybe doing it again? No. No? No. What happened is my sister... It's a long story. I want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> My sister came, my sisters came for Christmas. That was this last Christmas. And um, we opened our presents and then they left and everybody went to bed. And it was around close to midnight, which is kind of magical. And I went to turn off the Christmas tree lights under the tree with, you know how at Christmas the, the leaves start falling and it's crackly and you know that it's the end of the happy season. And there was a present there that, that none of us had found. And um, so all of a sudden my heart starts like, <gasps> A present, because when we were kids, we, we didn't get many presents. So it was like, and I didn't know if it was for me. But then I pull it out, and the lights are twinkling, and it's my name on it, and it's my sister from my sister Jenny. It said, love, Jenny. So I'm like, so then I took it to my writing room, and I um, unwrapped it really carefully, and I took off the lid, and there was a bracelet inside. And it said on the bracelet, it's never too late to be what you might have been. Yeah, and it was carved in it. And I was like... A slightly irritated, and I thought, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh, poo, I'm very happy. Here I'm welling right? up, and you're right. irritated no, by no. it. No, <laughs> no, I thought, I'm very happy, and then this voice dropped in, and it said, you always wanted to do theater, and then I got scared, because then I knew there was no going back, and then she got me an agent, the next thing I know, I call him, he has me meet somebody, I do a play, I finish the play, three days later, I meet on Bomb Girls, and and I'm casting Bomb Girls, and it's like, whoa! That's crazy. It's like I cracked the door open. I probably shouldn't have done wah, should I? Have? Why? <laughs> I don't know. Do I'm yeah. a grown woman of 51. No. You don't go, wah! <laughs> 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 or maybe you do, right? <laughs> this show is designed for you to be whoever you want to be and who you are. That's yeah. cool. When did you start to get a sense that you were in control of your life or getting some control of your life or you were becoming maybe more in charge of your own destiny? Right. Um, it, it was, um, we moved to Victoria um, after all the, the poop? Did you, you say poop? Yeah, okay. So without, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, and, and, then, yeah, and then I started ballet. I don't know why. Like, I look back on it now and I'm like, really? Because, you know, all that to try to do a perfect, you know, quadruple pirouette and land beautifully, yeah. you know, like, was really important. But I think it was the idea of taking something, starting late, that was so painful because your body is just making these shapes and yet making it beautiful and making it art. And there was something about the discipline and the structure of that that was a, a balance for the chaos 
that was going on at home. Well, you come from a compromised home, right? Right. You know, you right. talked about um, mm -hmm. being a victim of abuse in mm -hmm. your home, and your relationship with the mother doesn't exist as much now, does it? No, not so much. Not so much. Does with a, as a mother. Mm -hmm. It's fair. Yeah. yeah. And so I worry. Like, is it is it bad karma then going to come back? But I think the thing is, is that I can't. I spent my whole life. Um, doing the public line, and then when I hit my mid-40s, I'm like, no more. I'm standing strong in my skin. Who I am is who I am. I'm not ashamed of my past, whereas a lot of times I was trying to hide it. But I thought, no, stand tall in it, because you'll give other people the courage to know you can go on and do whatever you like, yeah. or that they aren't alone. When you think 51% of all girls in Canada are sexually assaulted before they reach the age of 18, mm -hmm. and, you know, a third of all men, it's like, the, the numbers are astronomical. And, and people feel so alone. So if you look at a group of people and you say, okay, well, half the women and one, you know, then it's like, so it's not our shame to carry. Right. My mother says that I made it up. And so I can either have a relationship with her on that grounds, but I can't lie. Like when you've been lying your whole life, you, even if you want to and your heart wants to and you want to be like, love me, love me, please love me, love me not who I tried to be for so many years, the truth of me. And, and my truth and her truth are very different. Right. And to, um, to take care of her in, in the way that she needs to be taken care of, I have to turn my back on me. That's a... And I suppose you try to be empathetic for your mother, too. I am. That this no, is I am. I love her. Yeah. I, no, I, I love my mom. Was she a role model in a way? I know you had a complicated mm -hmm. relationship with your mother, which yeah. a lot of people have, but was your grandmother the one that was kind of your solid female role model? Um, it was a mix. It was a mix of people. I think books. Yeah. I think people in the books were, um, taught me what families could be, what women could be, what I got my set of morals and right and wrong, I think, from reading books. And also my sister Jennifer was an enormous role model because she mothered us enormously. And, um, but yes, I told myself I come from, my grandfather was an orphan who kept himself warm um, and by putting newspapers in his clothes. He sold newspapers and he and his brothers um, supported the, the family. And um, I, I tell myself when hard times would hit, I come from good stock, yeah. you know, I can, I, if they could do it, I can do it. And so you feel like you have that strength through your body, even if sometimes you feel small and helpless. Do you ever sit back at home at night and turn the television on and stumble across a movie that you did back in the day and stay with it? No. Never? Oh, no. Because I say this because... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> movies were good when you were <laughs> it's not like you made a horrible movie oh no i made quite a few bad ones but you know <laughs> rent hairs <laughs> no it's very challenging if you had to watch a big chill again what would you think i don't know i haven't that. seen it since you know um they had a they had a screening but i didn't go to i went to the like hello hello oh it's so exciting a 25 year or 20 year something yeah. anniversary but i didn't actually sit through the film so i actually haven't seen any of the films other than agnes which i saw last year what was costner like in that part of his career <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> best answer ever. <laughs> he was, okay, he was very sweet. Actually, I had a little bit of a, not a history, history, not a, like a history, yeah. but I knew there was a, a time when everybody was talking about, um, everybody had gotten a blanket. It was very ugly, well, no, it wasn't ugly blanket. It was a very um, plain blanket, but it was wool. <laughs> okay, I thought it was kind of ugly, but, <laughs> But I really appreciate Marcia, Marcia Nassiter and those people yeah. for pitching in to get, give the main cast members a blanket. But I remember coming and everybody's like, ooh, I got my blank, I got my gift. Did you get your gift? And they were all like doing my gift, my gift, my gift. And I could see Kevin getting smaller and smaller. And then all of a sudden, we were at a party, they all had lots of parties. He goes, F you, whatever, you know. He goes, I'm, someday I'm going to be bigger than all of you. And he said it, but he said it with like such intent. I got this like shiver inside, like, whoa. Like, they were hurting his feelings, and I also felt like, you know, like that voice which said, you've always wanted to do theater, and I knew my life was going to change? Yeah. Just like, I got that, and I, I knew that someday he would be bigger than everybody. 
Yeah. I knew it at that moment, but the, the way he looked, and that was a side of Kevin he, he didn't really show because he was very amiable and friendly and nice. And he is very amiable and friendly and nice, and there's nothing wrong with having ambitions. Right. But for that moment, nobody saw it, but I got like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around more with Meg right after this. <laughs>
Last that to Meg Tilly. That's what happened to her. From the outside, her life seemed pretty cool. But the truth was far from it. See, Meg was still just a kid from BC when she co-starred in The Big Chill. 